I want to finish with a quick fire round, my friend. So I say a short statement and you give me your immediate thoughts. Does that sound okay? It sounds okay. So tell me, you're a prolific angel as well. What's been your biggest lesson from your angel investments? It's really hard to predict at angel stage who's going to be successful. And I've been like renewed belief in humanity when I see founders that I'm like, ah, the idea is good, but I'm not sure this founder can do it. And then you see the founder change into like a unicorn of a human. And that, I, I think inability to predict people's ability to grow has been like a real, real you know, eye opener. If you could put all of your money in one company that you're invested in, what would it be? I think it's these two, it's Rupa Health and Atlas. I love the mission. The founders are awesome. They like power through anything. And I don't do it for the money. I do it for like, I think they'll have successful outcomes, but I do it for how interesting the founder and the product is. And I think those two are, are doing very cool things. What's the biggest piece of startup advice that you hear that's total BS and why? I don't know because I don't even know what the startup advice is. I, look, I don't think anyone giving advice is trying to give BS. We're all starting trying to sound smart on the internet, right? So the thing you should realize about all advice and the most important thing is, does the fact pattern of the advice match up with the fact pattern of your situation? And often it doesn't, right? And so what you take from the advice is like the delta between the advice and where you're at in, in reality. Which seed fund do you invest in if you could only invest? First round. First round. Why? I just like, I like those guys. And I think they, um, I think they really care about helping founders get to product market fit. Like I think they're, they will sit and spend more time with the founders to help them get there than other funds that I know. So that's why I have a, a ton of respect for them. But I know like a bunch of people there. So if you could biased. invest in a series A firm, which would it be? Well, it was one once upon a time. You could just say benchmark to that. And I do like, I do like benchmark, but um, I, it's if hard for me to say not not Sequoia. I mean Sequoia. I think just they they just do, they just they've done it. You know, even like you know Brazil and stuff. It's like oh, New Bank. Of course, New Bank is with Sequoia. Like while we were all doing other stuff, you know, they're out securing that stuff. So what do you know now that you wish you'd known when you started? I, I there's this piece of advice which I think is good advice that I give to to people at larger companies, which is like the best thing to work on is the thing that has impact for the business, but that leadership doesn't care about. And I think you should, someone can, you can unpack that piece of advice for a while. If you're a leader, you can unpack that piece of advice and ask yourself sometimes what the best things for your business are happening, where you're not looking. And what does that say about you as a leader? And I think for employees, it tells them like the North Star is having impact and it, having impact at any business is really hard because there's all these forces that get in the way, like politics and internal incentives and whatnot. But ultimately the impact is what matters. And so you got to find, you got to find a way to work on something that allows you to have it. What would you most like, the final one, what would you most like to be remembered for as a leader? I would I hope that people who've worked for me or on my teams or with me uh, feel they did the best work of their life up to that point while they were working with me. That, if I could achieve that, I would, that would make me very proud.